Now the process of meiosis is a particularly fascinating one because we have to produce the sperm and the ovum, the gametes to generate the next generation. And if you think about it, these both have to come from parent cells. So this is a diploid cell. Diploid means it's got the diploid number of chromosomes in it. So it's got 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. And this one's a male. Therefore, this one is in the testes, but it contains 46 chromosomes. This one is in the ovaries, so it's a female one. And actually this process of meiosis in the female starts just a, a very short time actually after conception of the individual in early fetal life. Fascinating process. But it's also a diploid cell, so this contains 46 and this contains 46. And of course what we need to get to eventually is the next generation. And the next generation also needs to have 46 chromosomes. And yet we need to combine chromosomes from here and from here. So what we need to do is have a reduction cell division where we produce a cell of 23 and another cell of 23. This one, because it's male, is going to be a sperm cell. So it's going to have a head and neck tail. It's amazing, men can produce, let me write this down, 300 million of these per day. Quite staggering. Now when a girl's a fetus she's probably got a lot of these, maybe a million or so, but by the time she's mature and she's ready to start um, the menstrual cycles she's probably got, got about 40,000 left. Not all of them mature, of course. So these will be the these will be the sperm, and these will be the ovum. And of course, one sperm fertilizing one ovum, twenty three plus twenty three, gives us forty six to start the next generation. And this first cell of the next generation is called the zygote. At one time we were all a cell containing 46 chromosomes. That's how we all began. And that's achieved through this process meiosis, where the diploid cell containing 46 chromosomes is reduced to a cell with 23 chromosomes, the haploid cell. It's essential. And in meiosis, the haploid cells produced are not genetically identical to the parent cells because of this process called crossing over that we'll look at in a minute. But to go back to the story, the zygote, of course, divides into two. But this time the process is mitosis. Mitotic cell divisions each with 46. These divide of course again to produce four until we have the trillions of cells. Again another mitosis. Until we have the trillions of cells that comprise the whole body. Just ongoing mitosis. Differentiation into the specific tissues of the body. So what we see is meiosis is absolutely essential for two reasons. The first reason is it produces the haploid cells because we don't want to double the chromosome number every generation, that's, that's fairly obvious. But the second is, because these cells are not genetically the same as the parent cell, because the order of the genes and the DNA has been recombinated in this crossover process, 
we get genetic variation. So that's why you don't look like your brother or your sister. You're not identical to your parents. There's genetic variation in the next generation. And that's good because it allows the next generation to adapt to a variety of possible environments because they have this genetic variation. But that only occurs because of sexual reproduction. So meiosis is absolutely essential to sexual reproduction. It builds variation into the propagation of the generations while conserving the diploid number of 46 chromosomes arranged in 23 pairs. So the 23 pairs of chromosomes in this cell here, we get one of each pair in the haploid cell. The 46 chromosomes here in the dad, we get 46 chromosomes, we get one of each pair. So there's like a pair of uh, chromosomes. So there's, let's imagine one homologous pair of chromosomes like this. Of course, there's 23 of these pairs, slightly different sizes and everything. Here's a smaller pair here. So you get bigger and smaller chromosomes. This is the this bit in the middle here that joins the chromosomes is the uh, the centromere that joins the long and the short arms of the chromosomes. What happens is there's in the process of meiosis these homologous chromosomes, these pairs of chromosomes are separated, and one will go into one ovum and one will go into the other. Actually, it doesn't quite work like that in females because only one is preserved. But in many, it works like that. Um, one chromosome will go into one sperm from that pair, and this chromosome from the same homologous pair will go into the other sperm. And it's the same here. So it's not 23 random chromosomes, it's one chromosome from each pair that ends up in this gamete, the cell that produces the next generation. So in the next clip, we want to look at this process of meiosis in a little more detail.